In today's lesson, we shall learn all about the goddess of the lichen beasts, the mysterious deity known as Leonis. We'll discuss her origins, how influential she is among the lichen beast population, as well as some of her teachings. Please keep in mind that the teachings of Leonis are in no way the sole lichen beast religion. Just like humans, lichen beasts believe what they wish to, and while many follow the path of Leonis, many more choose to follow the teachings of lesser known lichen beast deities and even some human religions. Now, let us begin. The first records of Leonis in history begin to appear in the year 1597. An Asiatic lioness named Ethel Shortfang awoke one morning and began to rant about a mysterious figure she had seen in her dreams. The figure was as tall as a mountain, with the body and face of a human woman, but also with the wings of a white dove, thick golden hair like the mane of a lion, the horns of a bull, the teeth of a snake, the tail of a crocodile, and the claws of a wolf. Short Fang spoke of how the strange woman seemed to have millions of white butterflies swarming around her shoulders and hair, and gazed at her with pupilless eyes that seemed to glow with divine radiance. The woman said nothing, but allowed Short Fang to watch as she plucked two butterflies from the massive swarm surrounding her and turned them each into jewels each one of them resembling one half of a full heart. The strange woman then reached down to earth and placed the two halves of the heart into the wombs of two separate lichen beast mothers. When she had finished, the mighty creature then turned to Short Fang and simply said, Come, my children of the wilds, come and heed my words. For just as a butterfly seeks its one perfect mate among the thousands. So, too, shall you. This is the will of Leonis. Many people mocked Short Fang and claimed that she had merely had a strange dream. But she refused to accept their teasing and instead dedicated her life to understanding the possible meanings behind Leonis's appearance. Over the following three years, Short Fang was shocked when more and more lichen bees showed up at her doorstep, claiming to have seen the mysterious woman for themselves and heard her voice in their dreams. They joined her in her search for answers, and within a year they amassed a following of over 50 lichen beasts. These 50 became the first prophets, and they called their religion the teachings of Leonis. As the religion spread, more and more lichen beasts joined. Those who joined the teachings followed the guidance of a council of prophets, usually made up of three lichen beasts who spent their entire lives studying the creeds. Those who followed but did not seek the title of prophet were known as acolytes. And those who believed in Leonis but did not devote their lives to their creeds were known as waywards. As the years continued, Leonis became more influential among the lichen beast population. Temples and statues were built in her honor, and the white butterfly became the symbol of her teachings. Thousands of lichen beasts prayed to her, asking for a good life and the guidance to find their life mates quickly. While some still mocked the prophets, the teachings of Leonis became the leading religion among lichen kind. Festivals were held every year in her honor to thank her for giving them their one true love and for standing as a shining beacon in a dark world. For humans were still cruel and prejudiced against them. Leonis gave them something to follow and cherish. She was a figure of love, kindness, and the promise of life. In the more modern day and age, however, the teachings of Leonis are closely practiced only by three in every ten families. 
In the more devout families, it was common for a newborn lichen beast to be taken to a temple and presented to the altar of Leonis. The parents would pray for a long and healthy life for their child and beg Leonis to send them a worthy life mate. The temple would then sing their praises to the goddess, reciting her words and filling the air with their devotion. When a fated pair discover one another, it is turned into a great celebration that lasts three days. On the first day, the pair spend their last hours as a single lichen beast with their own families. They celebrate the paths they each took, which eventually led them to the perfect mate Leonis had promised them. On the second day, they are joined in matrimony before the eyes of Leonis herself. The temple hosts a great feast for the entire community where everyone, even those who do not follow the teachings, are welcome to join. On the third day, the two families give praise to Leonis and thank her for guiding the two souls together. They then host a grand party at the home of the newlyweds and everyone asks Leonis to guide them as they prepare for the next generation. While the teachings of Leonis had some lessons which were similar to human religions, the main focus of her creed was to find one's life mate. Leonis's strongest and most well-known creed is as follows. Be patient, my wild children, for I have chosen your perfect half. Do not seek them out. Only I know when you are ready to meet them. Many who follow the teachings believe that marrying someone other than your life mate is the greatest insult and sin against Leonis. Some of the more traditional prophets often warn young lichen beast children that their lives will be filled with hardships should they seek love outside of their fated union. Of course, there are prophets who dispute these claims, maintaining the belief that Leonis would want every one of her wild children to find love even if it's not with the soul she intended. These prophets tell of Leonis's understanding and gentle nature. After all, the world is a very big place filled with millions of people. Finding one's life mate would be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Still, many lichen beasts refuse to seek romance and marriage and wait their entire lives to meet their life mates. According to statistics, only 35% of the lichen beast population ever meet their life mate, and 3% of that number follow the teachings. While the teachings of Leonis have become more and more influential over the years, there is still so much about Leonis that is unknown. Her origins before Short Fang's vision have been the topic of many conversations. Some believe that she is a goddess of the earth who lay in slumber until the dawn of the lichen beast species. Some believed that she has been mentioned in other religions as a lesser goddess and has only now risen among the pantheons. A few of the more outspoken prophets have even begun to speculate that perhaps it was Leonis herself who created the lichen beast race. Whether she was a lesser goddess who rose to power, or a new goddess who happened upon our world, the fact still remains that Leonis is an integral part of the lichen beast culture. If you were to visit a lichen beast, it would not be uncommon to find some sort of altar covered in offerings for her somewhere in the home. The mysteries of this radiant deity are constantly being unraveled every day, and it may not be long until even her true origins are discovered. For now, however, lichen beasts live in contentment, knowing that their Lady of the Wilds watches over them, guiding them to their one true love. <laughs>